Hello and welcome back. In this video and the next, we're going to do some refactoring of our CDP Neighbors script. So first off, what is refactoring? Have you ever created a document, spreadsheet, or presentation where it may have taken only a few minutes to get the data into the document, but you spend the next several hours adjusting the fonts and margins? Well, that's kind of like what refactoring is. And actually, it is said that refactoring code is rewriting your code until the point that it is obvious what the code is doing. I don't promise we'll make this code obvious, but we can certainly make it more readable. We want our code to be easily read by our coworkers, our peers, as well as our future selves, so that when we want to modify the script six months from now, we can easily figure out what the code is doing. And finally, like any kind of creative writing, coding is an art. It's an art form, and we take pride in our code. And so be proud of what you write, and let's go ahead and do some refactoring. So to get started, I'm going to highlight this entire section that we're going to work on. And by hitting Control-Shift-D, I get a duplicate of this section. And by highlighting this section and hitting control slash that's the forward slash next to the right-hand side shift key. This comments out all of this code. Basically, there's a backup copy. So if things go bad, I can easily get back to where I was. So let's jump into our Python interactive shell to look at our data. I went ahead and imported NetMego and JSON. I've set up my switch and created a connection. I've grabbed the output of the show CDP neighbors command and we've stripped out the headers. And here we're gonna iterate over the lines and split each line into words. All of this so far is what the script currently does. We simply wanna see the data the way the script sees it. And when we iterate over these lines, what we have here are three different possible cases that we need to be aware of. We've got case number one, where all the data is available on a single line. And we have the host name in the first position, which is index zero. In case number two, we also have the host name at index zero, but we don't have any data to go along with it. Finally, in case number three, we don't have the host name. And so whenever we hit this case, we can expect that the previous line included the host name and that we captured it. Previously, we found that with case number one, we could pop out the host name from this list and be left with a list that has the same structure as case number three, and therefore we were able to handle those in the same way. Now, when we hit case number two, if we pop out the host name, which we're not currently doing, we would be left with an empty list. If you recall, before processing any of these lines, the script assigns the variable host name to none. And so for both case one and case two, not only do they both include the host name in the first position, but the host name will always be assigned to none at the point we're about to process that line. So by testing if the host name is none, we can then decide if we need to extract the host name. And so once we've extracted the host name, we can then check the length of list to see if there's any data in it. So let's implement this idea. So let's grab these two lines here and promote these up to the beginning of our loop. I'll use Control X to cut those lines, Control V to paste it where I need it, Shift Tab to unindent the code. Now, if at this point in the code, we hit case number two, where the line only includes a host name, which has been popped out, the length of the list will now be zero, and we can test for that. So only if the length of the list is greater than zero, do we need to continue processing the data, which is kind of obvious. If the list is zero, there's no data left in the list. So we've simplified the code just a little bit, but you can see that it does look better. Here's a comparison of the code. On the left is the original function from the previous video. And look at all this redundant code. But it was our first attempt, so it's okay. We refactored that out, 
and in the middle is what we finished with in the last video, which is noticeably better code, and it's what we started with today. But this section here is messy. This line is four levels of indentation deep, and we have this weird else followed by an if statement. So on the right hand side is what we did just now, and it looks cleaner. To quote the Zen of Python, flatter is better. You know, so why have code with four indents when we can have code that doesn't exceed three? And it should be easier to follow what's going on in the code. This new version should do exactly the same thing as the previous version, and we'll need to test it to verify that. So let's take a quick look at the switch. And you'll see that the switch has all these names here already. And the only way we can be sure that the new version of the script is working is by removing all of the old interface descriptions. So let's jump into Python again. And we're going to import pretty print. Pretty print just gives us uh, a nicer output when we're looking at lists. Uh, it's kind of like what we do sometimes with the, uh, the JSON dump s. We got to get a list of our interfaces. And so let's send a show run pipe include anything that starts with interface. So now we should have a list of interfaces. Perfect. So let's build a function that can reset the interface descriptions. We'll feed it the connection object that we created. Create a list to hold the config. And we'll loop around each interface. And we'll remove the description. And then we'll send the config to the switch. Now let's use our newly crafted function and see if it worked. We check the interfaces and now they're cleared out. So now we can actually go to our bash shell and test our CDP neighbor script. Looks good. And so our script is still working. We always want to check that we didn't break anything before moving on to the next task. So here are the lessons to be learned. All coders, even the best in the world, write bad code. The best coders refactor that bad code into good code. And so writing code is similar to writing anything else. You have to make edits to improve it. So your first goal in coding is just to write something that works and get the desired results. Then look back and ask yourself, how could I do this better? Am I proud of this code? In the next video, I'm going to do some more refactoring of the same function by dividing the functionality into two separate functions. And additionally, we're going to learn how to return generators instead of lists. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to get notified of future videos when they become available. Thanks so much. Happy scripting.